And guess what happened to me? You can't let opportunities slip you by. Because mm -hmm. guess what? They will just go to somebody else. And somebody else yep. who wanted it more will have it. Yep. They yep. will have it. Yep. This episode was brought to you by Rue. Move through the world without fear. Filter and find your perfect immigration professional. Hey, Kelly's here. If you don't already, you definitely need to head over to Instagram and follow me at Kelly's Travels for live tapings of the podcast and much more. See you there. Right. So I have another question here. Um, proof of funds. Let's talk about some money. What was your proof of funds like when you landed? It has changed and they just updated the proof of funds table. So when you were getting ready on the application, how much money did you have, did you have to show? I believe it was 12,500, 12, something like that, 12 something Canadian, which worked out to be about, I think I had like 66,000 TT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I back? Okay. And yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think do you think that's enough? So and this also our village is a networking community for Caribbean immigrants living in Canada. It's perfect for persons pursuing immigration, as well as persons who have already landed in Canada, and also first to third generation Caribbean immigrants. To find out more about the benefits and features of joining our village, visit ourvillage.com and find out how you can join Weeting. A little higher up. Was that enough? Was it proof of funds enough? What do you think? To, to actually stay here? Yeah, to actually survive. Well, it's only going to last. What I would average, it would probably last you, girl. It would be different for me because I'm staying with my sister. So I am different in the sense that yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have to go and act. I never really had to look for, for renting. A place mm -hmm. because I knew I was coming to my sister or I was going to go to my brother um, but I don't see that amount of money lasting longer than three four months as a single person to be honest um, the you say okay I say 66,000 TT and in TT that might last you a while um, if you put rent if you pay a car or whatever and stuff like that it might last you a couple months but um, in Canada it's dollar for dollar the same rent if you're paying two thousand dollars in rent in Trinidad, they're going to be paying two thousand dollars in rent in Canada. It's very, very close. So the twelve thousand Canadian, consider it like twelve thousand TT. It's it's not going to last you. So far, when it come up here, yeah, just yeah. So as much pre work that you could do with like looking for jobs and stuff like that before. I know you give me the advice of taking a transition job, a survival job. Um, mm -hmm. that might be something that might be in my future as well, you know, and no shame in that because everybody like the most distinguished, nobody cares. You said that yeah. too. Nobody looks at you different. In Trinidad, it's like looking bad, bad, they're looking at you like, hmm. you know, <laughs> in the Caribbean, if it is that you're cashing in a grocery, they're looking at you. In Canada, everybody hustling because you can have a good job and it might also want to have an extra income and it might be doing that any night you know it, do it doesn't matter you do you when they come up here and i still find you should do you wherever you are is in the caribbean because that's nobody business what your money is in your bank account mm -hmm. if it is mm -hmm. actually doing any kind of job once it's honest that is your business exactly you a good money. job is an honest job yeah that's what a good is job is yeah, good job I means do. an honest living that is what that's good not. job is yeah Trinidad, girl when I was in Trinidad, I had my eight to four and I was I was always hustling, you know, because I know I like nice things. You understand? And I would want to afford to, to buy nice things and I didn't have a child or any other responsibilities. So I would be doing other jobs if it is like doing um, little supervising for promotions or other things. I did that. I did all those different things. I was, I was, I'm a hustler. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. And so don't be ashamed of anything that you do and if it's that you're making honest money. Um, and so up here, I think they, you don't need to tell anybody that. Up here is already understood that. Because remember, up here, oh, what was a big surprise for me moving here? Sorry, I strained from this question. <laughs> Go ahead. I did not know that even in Edmonton, which would be considered rural Canada, that there was so much immigrants. I, I don't know that you know. I don't even feel. I'm not sure if the majority 
it is even Caucasian girl at this point in time. I feel like it's not the immigrant out way. <laughs> the people that don't expect to be the majority here. Girl, everywhere. So, you don't know what these people, and, and so the culture is different here. You don't know these people could be doctors in India and come in here and work in Virgin. You understand? Working in a mobile place. You don't know. So, it's, it's different they don't they don't care because they already know that this is a canada the whole of canada is a place for immigrants and not all immigrants are not going to start at the top or even equal to where it is that they came from they came from yep yeah so nobody has shame everybody went through this already everybody everybody nobody cares so um yes what was the question <laughs> Fun. So I think you answered right. Fun. You don't think, yeah. You don't think that the proof of funds would last you six months if you were really living dollar for if dollar. You were living, living comfortably or living to, to mm-hmm. where I don't think so. But like I, I don't want to say something that I'm not very familiar with. I didn't need to. I didn't need look like I can't even use my proof of funds because sure, I don't have no currency. We have nothing, nothing. Um, so. Yeah, I, I, you could use a credit card if you have a credit card. Have a credit card in Trinidad. If Once for the month. And you can't even, huh? if you pay back the credit card, you can't even use it again. You have to wait till the month flip over. I hope you know that, no. right? How you mean? So, like, if you have a $1,000 credit card limit and you're going to take out a $1,000 from ATM, you can't just, like, oh. pay it back from your account in Trinidad and use it again. Oh. No, you have to wait till the whole cycle. So, it's a thousand dollars for the month. Okay. Well, I did not know this. Thank you very yeah. much for that information. <laughs> so even the credit but card is not a good backup plan for getting your proof of funds out of Trinidad. No, well, this is this is the next thing. Well, thank God, credit cards are the primary way of you of money transactions. So yeah. I don't need mm-hmm. cash. I didn't need. I, honestly, I don't really need cash. I don't need the money. So what I do, I just pay off my pay off whatever I swipe and I use. Sometimes you don't need cash, like buying like like bus tickets or something and I'm sure you could probably get away and buy it somewhere and swipe your card but um but yeah the majority the vast 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 majority of paying for things in Canada is paying with a credit card and so yeah so at least you have access to funds but consider this Tamika consider you have landed here you don't have your sister you don't have nobody right and you're thinking okay you see this credit card here I could it's have a thousand dollar limit let me even say it have a five thousand dollar limit. Good. So I could afford to buy my car for three thousand dollars, pay it back for my funds in Trinidad. Then I could afford to still pay for my three months up front in rent and pay it back. No, 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 partner. That's five thousand dollars for the months. Only, so only even if you you load back up your card, you can't get access to it until the month flip over to spend again. It's done. Because of the currency issue. So just for all you all who are here, wow. just know your credit card is not a backup plan for having proof of funds. It's not. I don't want to let it go to the heartache <laughs> that I went through, right? And look, it's mm. adventure. She went through that, right? Recently. Really? Because she just landed on a while ago in Edmonton as well, right? Just know mm. that. You see why I have another, that she has have another community? Plan. You see why I have a community? Because look, I'm here and I use my credit card. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. So, so anyway. it's sharing all the people, different people's experience. That is so mm-hmm. helpful having people who fam- who are in a familiar stage and a familiar process as you. And so that's why I'm real happy to even hear share what experience that I have. And I, I'm not. I don't think I know everything. Look, I learn information as you talking as well. You know. But yeah. I, just, I hope that something that I said may have helped somebody that didn't go through the process yeah. where I am yet. You know. I'm I mean? sure you have plenty of people right now. Hench. I'm breaking down. Everybody here come up. And download Hinge. Hinge are having problems. Hinge are having real problems. Right? So. I should invest before I come on the live. You see? I should invest in a little Hinge before I come on the live. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Awesome. 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 So what is in store? Like, what, What are your dreams? What are your plans for your new life? I know I sent you the pre-order of the book, some of the templates, some goal setting activities. Talk about it, like talk about where you envision this going. What do you see for yourself? Yeah, um uh, by the way, I love I saw some 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 snippets of your book. 
And I truly wish that I had something like that, Khalid, before I came on, I was just saying this, because that would have, you remember I told you about support and I just want to feel as if somebody going through this with you and that you're not, you didn't, you're not new to this or you're not the first person walking this path, that feeling of community and that mm-hmm. you have some sort of guidance into what you're doing and that's step by step. And I said, we both said, if we had somebody else or if we, we had some sort of consultation or somebody else to guide us through what these steps would be, we would have, we would have been Done in Canada a quicker. before. Yes, for sure. We lost a time. My, I know I lost mm-hmm. a lot of time. You understand? Um, and so, yeah, just going through that, that book is something that, yeah, I think is really beneficial. And I look forward to your launch date, girl. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you. For doing this. I am so proud of you for doing something. Like that. And I'm not just proud of you, but I really know that it will be helpful for other people to follow. And I, I wish you had honestly done it like two years ago. To be honest, but that's all right. Better, better now than never. You understand? Better now than never. Better, better now than never. But the plan, the plans for me, um, I wanna. I feel like even as I have another, another like a what do they call it, a second wind, like a, yeah. another chance at life, and mm-hmm. I feel as if this is an opportunity where it's a it's a clean slate. Nobody knows me. Um, you could reinvent just, yourself. Like, I can reinvent myself. Someone yeah. who, I have a friend who um who's from Germany and he migrated to Canada and then he came here and he he was giving me like a little pep talk because remember I tell you I was nothing was crying right right and um he was telling me he's like yo don't worry you would you would love it you know just be open just be open mm-hmm. to opportunities and experiences just just embrace people and 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 reach out to people don't be afraid like take the doors that open take them you know mm-hmm. and reinvent yourself you are nobody and that's a beautiful thing because sometimes you wish where you are you would wish you could just start all over again and just yep. and you know if i had done it this way i probably might have do it better well you could do it different and what moving right. to another country you could do it different because nobody knows you and it's a really i love that feeling and so the way that i the way that i want to do it this time is that where I was, I felt as if it is that the lack of job opportunities, where it is that I spent so much time doing jobs that I didn't particularly want to do. Or not, not want to do it. <laughs> doing jobs that I wasn't truly feel, feeling fulfilled in. I spent a lot of time doing, um, doing things that I wasn't fulfilled in doing. And now, girl, and I feel like being 30 and everything like that is like you're older and you're wise. And it's just like, yo, in a new country and a new space of, an, of, of experiences that I've learned from my life before, I am going to enjoy my life and make it exactly how I want it to make. And nobody's mm-hmm. going to stop me. So you see that YouTube channel? You see Mika's menu? You see I want to do communications earlier? I am going to do, and I mean, it could change, but whatever I am going to do here is what is it I am going to do. So what I intend is that I want to get a job in my field. I want to get a job in communications. If that's an eight to four, I want to build Mika's menu. I really love making videos. Um, it's so much fun for me. I, I love helping people. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's just something that I really want to continue to pursue. Um, yeah, and so Mika's menu and a job in my education that I have educational background in is something that you're going to be seeing from your girl soon. I just love any, I, I love the energy, you know, I love the energy, <laughs> I love the energy. Yeah, yes, I love said you have to manifest it. Open to the experience of it all, you know. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ah, wow, give some fire emojis, guys. Come, let them know that you're getting information that is definitely making a difference. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't get to know. I don't get some sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell us about. I have two things to ask you, right? Tell us about firstly your travel from Trinidad to Canada, like the actual plane ride. How was that? How was that for you? I always have to ask people this because this is like where the rubber meets the road. You're thinking about immigration, you're going through it, you probably had your assessment in the village. But you see when you have the tickets in hand on the NPR call, 
that is when the shit does start to happen. So let's hear me hear what how it was for you. Um, your transit. Emotionally. emotionally Everything. Yeah, tell us about it. Right? Like, yeah, I tell you, I was a mess. I mean, like, my friends sleep over the night before. They so I really have some amazing friends, you know. They slept over the night before and they, they, they you know, they helped me pack. You think it could be as packed as it can be and then, like, girl, things is just a pay out of nowhere. Things that you, oh God, kill if it's kill. <laughs> things that you, that you think, you, you pack all your clothes up and you think it's just your clothes, but your fridge full. Crap, I have to empty the fridge, you know? All these different things. So I would say be well, be completely dressed with your suitcase zipped up well in advance before you're ready to body plane because there is going to be things that you forget. There's going to be things that you didn't cater for before you're actually comfortable to leave. Because you're not just going on a vacation. You're uprooting your entire life, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The morning that I was leaving, I had eight garbage bags full of clothes because I couldn't carry it. It came in two suitcases. My, my mm-hmm. life had to in suitcases. You understand? I had to get somebody to just come and just take them, you know, just take everything. So um, that was a process. The, the Before jumping on the plane was, was an ordeal. Um, I thought that I was very prepared. And then it was just things that was just coming up. So if I could give advice to somebody else, I would say be even more prepared. Because mm. you would just find little things, your ability source still in the cupboard. And you had a way to give it to, you know, you didn't think about them things, you know? So that was that. Then COVID. You, you, if it is not somebody traveling in COVID, I don't think COVID going by anytime soon. I think we're just going to have to manage it and get accustomed to some things. And those things are always going to be changing. So when I say no, I hope it is beneficial to when you all move, but it's ever mm. changing. And that's just the climate that we're dealing with because that's what I had to deal with as well. Um, when I got the document, um, the 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 valid document, because remember it expired and I got it back. When I got it back now, um, I booked my tickets and everything like that. And then when I um when I was booking my tickets, I was not getting a straight flight to Toronto because you have to go from Toronto to Edmonton or right. however you want to come to Calgary. So the main way, the easiest way, really, is to get a flight from Trinidad to Toronto, Toronto to Edmonton. Nay, nay. Said yeah. Caribbean Airlines and COVID. Nay, nay. They wasn't having it, right? And then the borders just opened in Trinidad like July, right? Like a month before. So only tickets had sold out when I said I was ready to buy, to buy my tickets. Um, so I just like, oh man, I need to get out. I just need to get out because now I learned my lesson from the last time when I said I got stuck in Trinidad. I was like, yeah, so now I was like, when I can leave, I want to even know. Yeah. As soon as I get this document in my hand, I bust in it, right? So I get the document or whatever and I, and I say, okay, I just need to reach outside of Trinidad because at least outside of Trinidad, I might have a better chance of reaching, right? So I was like, okay, I don't get any flights to Toronto. Let me see if I can just buy, let me just buy a flight to Miami. You get buy a flight to Miami. I wasn't getting any direct flights to Toronto or Edmonton. No, direct, no. Again, everything was like taking me to Atlanta, Michigan, kill all kind of madness. So I was like, what is going on here? And then to even reach to Miami, I had to go to Guyana, then go to Miami. So I was like, nah, boy. It was, it, you know what? It was going to be so bad that, you know, you have to have 72 hours when you take your PCR test. Me just being in transit was going to be longer than three days. So wow. I would have to take a PCR test again in transit to just reach to Edmonton. So it just, wow. it was just, so all those different things you have to consider when it is that you're, you're booking a ticket because now with COVID, you have to have a PCR test to enter most countries that is within 72 hours. So you, mm-hmm. And it's going to have a lot of delays and a lot of stopovers. So you need to really be conscious about how it is that you're mapping your route. Right? Right. So I bought, I just, I just was antsy and I buy a ticket to Miami because I was like, if anything, at least I in Miami. You understand? Right. Yeah. So when I realized that this thing just taking me all over the place and it was going to be, it was going to be longer than three days I was going to be traveling for just to reach the Edmonton. And I was like, you know what? Let me, let me look back again. And so I said, instead of trying to just look for a flight to get out, I said, let me look for a route. Let me just put the end route in like one of those um uh, like Expedia or um one of those things, kayak or whatever. Let me just put the end route to Edmonton and let them map for me 
what would be the direct flight would be what would be the most efficient flight would be so right, i just right. put trinidad to edmonton and let them figure it out right and then i saw that what was the name of the page again sorry i missed that what uh, do you use that I got Expedia or Kayak. Okay, I okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I use one of those platforms. I use Edo interchangeably. And um, I saw that they mapped out a way for me that was much shorter to go to Barbados. Mm. And Barbados had direct flights to Toronto and then Toronto oh. to Edmonton. And trust and believe that was the smoothest that you could have get in this time. And <laughs> no one in traveling in COVID it is going to be a hop and a drop and a skip to end up to your last destination it's not mm -hmm. easy um so i so then i had to cancel my flight to miami and then right, I right. Do some money or whatever whatever because at the end of the day girl i know a lot of people spend more money to reach where they are and i was like at this point sam girl it's just your mind your eye on the prize and you have to go so yeah i forget what our miami trip i don't know if i might could, could come back in Trinidad and use it on a little tobago or something right, so we tell us something it. I have real grievances, but I don't know if I might ever get sponsored by Caribbean Airlines in the future. So let's so talk try, about it. I try to say no about them, you know, because they want to get collect your bag, right? Yeah. But if I can stay off the record, you see them? No. You see them? They can hold a whole mother. Yeah, so I am. They still have money said, for me. Somebody said manifesting it. I am manifesting that that Miami trip, I'll get to use it at a later point in time. I hope. But if not, girl, I don't care because at this point in time, I good. Whatever, count it lost. So, yeah. um, cancel that that flight, and then I I said, okay, well, let me rebook to um to Barbados now. Going to Barbados, um, well, before I reached Barbados, I'm Piaco girl, and I didn't realize because I do this last minute, right? I mm -hmm. didn't realize that before you can even jump on a plane to go to Barbados. You have to um, you have to have a confirmation of an accommodation of where you're going to stay because you have to. If oh, so I had to overnight in Barbados for the flight oh, next day right, to go right. to Toronto, right? And it, to enter in Barbados, you is either you're visiting and you're staying, or if you have a delay, you have to. But either way, you have to um show where you're staying. You have to you have to show where you're staying to quarantine. You have to quarantine. Right. 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 So. You, so what so the so I, I didn't notice my girl your girl did not notice so i fully packed ready to migrate not visit migrate and i did not know how i was going to enter into barbados <laughs> oh god and that's the next thing you have to research where it is that you where you're connecting to because you might think okay well my final is in canada and you focus on canada and what canada needs because i really saying yeah well i have everything that canada needs i have my arrived canada app and everything I, but right, I right right that I had to what Barbados need. So you know what Barbados need. Girl, and everybody needs something different. And what everybody needs ch ever changing as well. You understand? Because mm -hmm. why from mm -hmm. went through, probably tomorrow going to change as well. So you really need to be updated about your in between flights as well. Any country that you enter might be a different requirement, right? Because what I needed when I was going to Miami, what I needed to enter um, Guyana was different to what I needed to enter Barbados. You understand? So wait, wait, wait. You went from Trinidad to Barbados to Guyana? No, 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 no. I just saying, like, before oh, okay, now, right, right, I had right. booked to Miami. Just get confused. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, God, no. No. Mm -mm. All right, oh, that was the flight from before. You were doing research on the flight from before. Yeah. From okay, I understand. I booked the flight to Barbados last minute. So, when it is that I booked the flight to Barbados, I just thinking, okay, well, the requirements will be the same. Barbados mm -hmm. is my neighbor. It would probably be similar to what anybody else would need. No, what Rihanna no. say? What Rihanna say about flying fish? <laughs> Are you giving me flying fish station? <laughs> Girl, and then it's staying to the land. I tell you, I had to. Bejas, bejas. I'm just a bejas flying to the house here. Staying to the land. But no, I love, I love, I love my, I love my Bajans. I love Barbados. It was Barbados was the way to actually get me into Toronto. And mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. Yeah, the same people that I was talking to, the same mentor that I had was Bajan. So I love. Bajan. Yeah, I love the Bajan. Bajan people, yes, I love yes, all yes. your real help, Mount and this crossroads. Yes, thank you very much. All your real help. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm saying, so like Bajan. No, and Barbados had the things together, you know, to enter. Mm -hmm. I honestly find that whole process was. 
was so efficient. So you have to book a hotel before you could enter the country. So I had like a twenty-four, like a twenty-something hour layover. So I, right. I didn't know how, I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I just like I'll figure it out, right? But no, right. I had to have a, I had to have a quarantine hotel. I had to have a booking. So I up by the, by the, by the um, by Caribbean Airlines now in in um, in Piaco with my tickets, and I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to go. Take my bags, and she's like, girl, no, you have to have a a, a confirmed hotel. I had to run across my KFC to get some internet. Oh so shit! Then to book, I had uh, I saw like, yeah, uh, like, accommodation. I asked her what hotel you with, what hotel you with, because everybody had to have a hotel booking, right? What hotel you with? She told me what hotel she was with. I book it fast. I don't care what was the amount. That's the next thing too. When you're traveling and your and your, your end goal is somewhere, don't spend, spend money. money. You, you will spend, spend the money. money after. Yeah. Don't spend your body money. I don't even know how much was the ticket, was the was the amount of money I spent on that hotel. For that one night, I don't care because I know that I had an end goal and it not, that hotel was not going to stop me from what I was about to do. So mm-hmm. whatever they could have tell me it was a hundred thousand dollars and well I wouldn't have it. But <laughs> I would have found it. I would have found it. Dude, at least to use the card. Like yes, Lord, let this card right. out. I just I had a swipe it slow. I said whatever. Wow. Yes, Lord. You see this card? I have a hundred thousand dollars. I'm manifesting that amount too. So um, I just swipe and I was just I was just booked and I'm going back by the I had to line back up again and I line back up and I was like, hey, look, I have my um, my my, right. my confirmation of my booking and then I got jump on the plane last minute, girl. They must call in my name in the airport. That never happened to me. Get my name call up in the airport, girl. <laughs> call up in the airport, girl. A shame, but I had to go and make the booking. I was like, I miss the whole flight altogether and and nah. So thank praise God. Girl, God was with me that whole way through, girl. So I spent the night in Barbados. I relaxed. I enjoyed myself. I unwind. I bathe. I shower. I sing. I lolo off on the king size bed. <laughs> so I don't even know I pay for a king size bed. I lolo off on the king size bed. You didn't know what you pay, so I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. And um and yeah, and then the next day I catch my flight to Toronto. And then I had a couple of hours again layover. You have to be patient. You have to be patient. A lot of patience I had to exude during that process because it was a lot of long layovers. Mm. Um, a lot of long layovers. And you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it because it's COVID. You understand? You right. just have to be happy that you're actually getting a flight at some point in time. True. Um, and so I took it. I took it like that. And, and like I said, I learned my lesson from being stuck in Trinidad for a year and a half. I was going to take... I was not going to to um, procrastinate or or take my time or right. complain even about yeah. an opportunity you know even if the opportunity might be strenuous complaining about it was no longer going to be my vocabulary girl i tell you i was going to do anything to make sure that i reached the end of it um and all of that is life learning processes too all of that is life experiences mm-hmm. and so it has made it the end of the journey even sweeter because now that I'm in Canada, I just looking back at that year and a half I was in Trinidad and I'm just like, wait, I made it, boy. No matter. Yeah. All this thing, all these hoops I had to jump, all these whatever I had to do, um, it was worth it. it. All of it, it will be worth it. Whatever you're going through right now, guys, everybody listening, whatever, everything that you're going through right now, it's worth it. And this is from somebody that didn't even really want to come. So... <laughs> Intense. This somebody. Intense. Who... <laughs> it's somebody that wasn't even so excited to come. It, it is. It is. I was. I was eager. This coming down to the end of it, I was eager to leave and I was eager to enter. And now that I'm good, I could just breathe and just be like, yeah, I'm ready to roll and rumble. I'm ready to go. Maybe mm-hmm. that waiting phase. Maybe that waiting phase was really the time for you to adjust and mm-hmm. realize that is really what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because it was a very uncomfortable. I could imagine how uncomfortable because you quit your job. It was literally about to. So now you're in limbo for a year and a half. So kind of like figure out that hey, this is really what I want and I'm going for it. Maybe. The finance job that I was in, remember, I got it in January and I, was, I had my ticket book in May. And I was already, I knew that I was going to leave in March. So I already let go of that company. I was like, yeah, this four years. Oh God, it's coming to an end, thank God. And then COVID happened on me. And I and that's when I realized in COVID too, COVID is a 
B I T C H, right? But, <laughs> and I don't know if I don't know if I can say that. A whole like big one. <laughs> but you know, you know, you know, they like to cut me off. But listen, I what I that listen, COVID was such a learning experience for me because it was from that I realized I I invest all this time into this this company and I'm not happy. You know, and I and I knew I was making provisions to leave, but it didn't work out. And what am I going to do about it? Am I going to invest another four years? Is that kind of don't work out? No, mm-hmm. I quit. I left. It gave me the strength to realize what was important because I wasn't mm-hmm. going to go through a pandemic, and I wasn't going to go through you know all these different things. I was going. I I trusted. That's when I really trusted to make it again. And I said, Jill, you have this. You will make it work. You see that in a hustler spirit you have. Mm-hmm. In a pandemic, you're going to make it work. You have your rent to pay. You have your car to pay for. You have things to pay for. You will make it work. Your happiness and your mental health is way more important. And I quit a job in the middle of in the beginning of a pandemic. My manager was like, "Yo, don't do this. What are you doing? No, just stay here. Your job permanent. Why are you doing mm-hmm. this?" And I was like, "Yo, no." And you know what? less than two weeks so i i told my fa- my family of course was panicking because i am the only one really in trinidad and they were like girl all right well we, we support you but you know what you're really doing but we're here for you i hope i'm glad you're enjoying yourself whatever and i started to do yoga on youtube in my living room and i started to do kumbaya if you see a girl stretching i was like yeah i want to and then i was like and then that's when that's when mika's menu materialized because i was like oh yeah. wow okay yes Yes, when I quit my job I'm in COVID, I was like, I want to do things now that only fulfills me. I don't want to go back now. You understand? And for that, I was home and with no job in sight. I had no idea what was going to happen to me. I didn't know if it was that Canada was going to happen. I didn't know nothing. Canada was done. Like, it was all the door because I had no way of moving. It had no mm-hmm. flight. It had nothing. So and they didn't I even know, to, nobody was even communicating to tell you when you would get to renewed. If nothing, you would get to renewed, nothing. Nothing, nothing. So I was just, I, all I know is that I am in Trinidad and I don't have a job. And I was happy. <laughs> I was happy. And I started to, again, I started to do all these different things. And I was like, you know what, let me read. Really, and then I started to get real active with my with my cooking. Because now I'm cooking healthy and I'm cooking a lot. And I experimented with recipes. And I'm real getting into it. Because now I'm in a good mental space to be who I want to be, you know? And um, somebody keep mentioning this, and, I, and I'm really going to stick with this word manifesting. Two weeks later, a job that I had applied for like two years ago or something, I had multiple interviews with them, and a job that I really wanted, they called me. Mm. I quit my job. And you know, Laws, I was with that job before for four years, and I did not get an opportunity to leave. And I quit that job, and in two weeks you hear what i said mm-hmm. two weeks i had no idea how i was gonna figure it out two weeks two weeks just the amount of time where you you know your vacation over and you're you're like okay Tamika, all right now you had to really start to pay your bills look for a job just when that was over and i was getting ready to be like all right Tamika, you gotta you unwind yourself now it is that you have to get back on the get right. serious now, yeah i have to get serious now the job that I always wanted called me. Wow. And that was, and I had a full year, a year plus of work experience with that job. And I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Big up, big up, Amco. Yeah. Yeah. Big up, Amco. <laughs> she dropped her names on you. Big up, big up, big up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And, and then I, I'm just thinking like, you look back and you're like, everything happened reason because that was a yep. quick experience that could not benefit me here you know because the products that we was that i was dealing with in, in in that company is international you know i could i could link up with the same brands that i was that i have so familiar with now that i have a year plus experience with now in the middle of covid i could do something with them here now like i could girl you know you have to get your guts boy your guts you know yeah you really yeah i totally understand like I, this interview here reminded me of when I was speaking to Nikki like about a month ago you met Nikki when you came up to my house mm-hmm. Jenica she, she has mm-hmm. a business doing wigs and hair and all kind of different stuff right she mentioned that she in her hometown in her home country the Bahamas 
um, she didn't, she always wants to migrate, but she didn't want to leave because she had a good job. It was only when she lost her job because of the a hurricane they had, when she lost her job, it allowed her to then blossom and think about moving forward. Mm-hmm. You know? Some so, of the most unfortunate things is bring new transformations in your life that you never could have even imagined for yourself. Mm-hmm. They've, mm-hmm. they've been lost, you know, lost this really have a way of being like such a valuable lesson is an, is an unfortunate way for you to achieve greatness. But if that's the only route to achieve it, then, you know. So be it. So be it. So be it. I'm willing to so learn, I'm willing to crawl before I learn to walk. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm willing to go through the hard times in order to enjoy the good times. Yeah. A lot of people want the good times without the hard times. It just don't happen. I don't, I don't know anybody would happen like that for them. If for anybody tag them, please. And them run off, run off some of the good energy and me. Yeah. But anyone who I know who made it in life went through some real back end times, some real struggle times in the life, you know? Go. So now you've landed. And I just want to answer some questions. Some person's asking. I don't know. Oh, girl, in closing, we're wrapping up, right? We're wrapping up. What advice would you give for somebody who really thinking about immigration as a single person? They're thinking, I don't have nobody. I don't know if I could do it. How can I do it? How? What advice would you give to that person? Trust in yourself, you know. I would say that you don't need nobody in your, other than yourself. When you really want something and you put your mindset, we're using the theme of manifesting. But it really is, is, is about, you have to have the self-assurance and the confidence in yourself first before you can even manifest and, and speak mm-hmm. things into the game. You understand? I would say you really have to know that it, you're not alone. You won't be the first. You're not the first. You're not special. You understand? And that's a, that's a big thing that I wish somebody told me. I was not special. In a good way. In a good way. You're not new to the process. This has been a process that has been going on for years. And every, a lot of people, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people like you, have been through the process and have succeeded and are living here and have their whole family and thriving successfully. Go through it. Put your mindset and you can do it. Go step by step. Don't, if it is that you something don't work out, a lot of my process, where I, th- I thought I would have been in Canada, at 30, I thought I'd have been having things already, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. life just not like that, and COVID taught us that, life just don't work like that. Unpredictable, you know? yeah. It's unpredictable, and in the immigration process, it is unpredictable as well. In the migration process, landing here even, it is unpredictable as well. You have to have a stick to itness and a sort of perseverance, that going to set you apart from other people because only great people, only great things, there's a way for people who really go, jump through hoops. Because otherwise mm-hmm. it won't be great because then everybody will have it. You'll be mediocre. True. Yeah, Miss Oh, God. Yes, preach, yeah. preach. Yeah, no, preach. You, really have to, <laughs> yeah. You, really have to, you really have to stick through it and enjoy. I have people, I have friends who are trying to migrate as well who would have failed the aisles. I'm going to give up. Oh God, I the book. You can't give Don't up. Hold them. I'm telling you, a book, my flight, my book, my hotel ticket to Barbados inside of Piaho with my two suitcases. I didn't even care. You have to go through it. You have to stick to it. And you know what? When I when I thought that I was taking Canada for granted, and I was like before COVID, and I was in January, and I was like, oh, I'll wait till May. May. I got you in January, and I wait till May. And guess what happened to me? You can't let opportunities clip your by because mm-hmm. guess what they will just go to somebody else and somebody else yep. who wanted it more will have it yeah they will yep. have it yep. and and somebody else who was behind you too you know somebody else who probably started behind you would end up reaching in front you. of you just because of their wanting to have itness i don't even yeah. know if that's a term but it's only honest yeah, we I make it as a term we we no, you really have, if, if anything in this process has taught me, is really to trust yourself, stick things through, and don't let little things knock you down. Because that's mm. not the end of life. And that's just how life is, and you're not special. The things, things, negative, things that you didn't plan for, this happened to everybody. You're not special. If it happens to you, everybody has to go through it. And the people who you're seeing at the top, is the people who had negative ha- things happen to them too. But it's just rolling punches. Did not, exactly. Yeah. 
they did not let that face them and they continued going. So, and it's a great lesson to them, and that's why your girl, I, you know, I come here on a better, I come here, no better than how I come here January 2020 when I got through because yes. I had so much things that I didn't plan for happen to me and broke my down and I had it to climb over it. Up your and skin. now yep. it gives me resilience, and that's what you have yeah. to have resilience. Resilience, that's the word. That, honestly, you see, immigrants, most resilient people I've ever come across. That's true. Most resilient sure. people, entrepreneurial by spirit, is in the blood. It's not everybody. Immigration is not for everybody, so I'm not in any habits of trying to convince people because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. Let me just be real. It's hard. No, right? It's, it's not. Hard, right? You had sometimes you had to spend some money. Sometimes you had to meet strangers to guide you along the way. Sometimes you get wrong information when you especially with free information mm -hmm. that costs you mm -hmm. some more money than you would have yeah. spent in the, in the beginning. Yeah, you had to right jump out yourself. Can you say how I meet you? I jump up myself. Yeah. I come to one internet out with my friends and say, you know, can you say here by myself? I jump up myself and I message you. I was like, hey girl, I hear too. What's up? <laughs> you had to jump out yourself. Yeah. You had to have confidence. You had, to, you had to build that confidence about you and even when things knock you down, that's that's when your confidence is tested and you have to persevere yes. and have resilience through that as well. Not only when things go smooth is when it is that you have to have confidence, no. Even yeah. more so when things not going your way. I think that's, yeah, it's true. That's how you build your confidence. I know, yes. I was reading just something recently and it was saying that a lot of us are in survival mode. Like, we have survived. If we're talking about single people here, yeah, a lot of people are not single by choice. Right, a lot of people went through divorces, came out of abusive relationships. Like they're not single by choice, but they're looking to make this move because we're talking about single people here, right? Mm -hmm. So you have been in survival mode for so long. Wait, okay, you're surviving, you're surviving, you're surviving. Now it's time to switch it over into thriving mode, which will require you not just to do the bare minimum. In yeah. survival mode, you could do the bare minimum. Sometimes surviving just means to keep your head low. Sometimes yeah. survival mode could be requiring you to shut up. Yeah. So survival mode is different from the thriving mode. Thriving mode requires you to take action. Move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It is two different phases. So if you're mm -hmm. in survival mode for so long, sometimes you think that that is the projection. You're on no, you need to switch it up if you want to go into thriving mode. Mm -hmm. You need to switch it over. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Or else you get left so behind. It's as simple as that. Or you get left behind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, I mean, immigration is not for everybody. Yeah. People in China live in the best life. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Your friends are in China live in the best life. People in Bahamas, yeah. Jamaica live in the best life, right? So you don't have to, you don't need to be in Canada to thrive. You don't need to be in Canada. Mm -hmm. You need to migrate in order to live your best life. But mm -hmm. if you have decided that this is your projection, this is the, this is the path you want to take to better your life, that's, mm -hmm. like, that's a decision that you can make. If you have decided that this is what you're going to do, start to make some moves now. Nah? You're making mm -hmm. some moves, right? <laughs> that makes that too. Yeah. We're making some moves. Moment. We're making some moves, right? Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, guys, head up to the link. This episode was brought to you by Rue. Move through the world without fear. Filter and find. Hey guys, Kalis here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Our Village Podcast. You can also check us out on Spotify or Apple Podcast. And of course, you can visit our YouTube channel for more entertaining immigration stories. Migrating can be a huge headache. For one thing, you have to do tons of research and stay updated on the ever-changing rules of immigration. You also have to avoid scammers and immigration fraud. And even when you are super careful you can still fall victim to low-quality consultants that would make you wish you had done it yourself. Plus, there's the challenge of knowing exactly which programs you're qualified for and are competitive in, so that you don't aimlessly go spending money on paths that will not lead to success. As a result, immigration research can turn into a full-time job, leaving many people feeling overwhelmed, hopeless and discouraged. Fortunately, there's a better way. Introducing Row Services. A virtual marketplace where you can filter and find your perfect immigration professional, so you can relax, knowing you left your immigration journey to the experts. With Row Services, we'll ensure the identity of your consultant so you can have the peace of mind of knowing exactly who you are talking to. 
And now you will also have the ability to message your consultant directly on the platform and you can filter by price, rating, years of experience, and much more. And we'll also give you access to verified reviews from real people who worked with your consultant. That way you can hear what others are saying before opening your wallet. And because we offer a variety of immigration professionals like immigration consultants, lawyers, education consultants, settlement service providers, career coaches and language tutors, you'll never have to worry about being stranded in your immigration journey. But perhaps the best thing of all is that we offer the ability to create and privately share your immigration profile with desired professionals on the platform. This means that you don't need to keep repeating the five pages of paperwork every time you decide to work with a consultant. Now your consultant will have access to your role profile long before they get on a call with you. This way, your call can be focused on strategy, not paperwork. To learn how Roe services can make your immigration journey hassle-free, speak to one of our representatives today by visiting roe.services or by messaging us on WhatsApp 1-803-205-8203. Roe. Move through the world without fear. Build for immigrants. By immigrants.
Our village is a networking community for Caribbean immigrants living in Canada. It's perfect for persons pursuing immigration, as well as persons who have already landed in Canada, and also first to third generation Caribbean immigrants. To find out more about the benefits and features of joining our village, visit ourvillage.com and find out how you can join Weeding.